Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at an NFED half wave that's advertised as a no tuner solution for 80 meters through 10 meters. Some hams may say it's great for both home stations and portable ops, but is it really that versatile? We're going to find out as I put this NFED half wave from Guzizu through its paces. And you might be wondering, well, what is an NFED half wave and why 80 meters? Why would someone even want an NFED half wave antenna? And why would it go all the way down to 80 meters if I don't use 80 meters? Well, let's be realistic. 80 meters is not everyone's favorite band. And it might be right for you, but even if it's not right for you, the NFED half wave gives a more resonant antenna across multiple bands, often without the need for an antenna tuner. And even if you do need an antenna tuner, the adjustments are usually fairly minimal. If you do have the space, this antenna offers coverage from 80 meters all the way to 10 meters. That's right, 80 meters, 60 meters, 40 meters, 30 meters, 20 meters, 17 meters, 15 meters, 12 meters, and 10 meters, I can count. This NFED half wave is essentially a long wire fed into an auto transformer, which takes a very high impedance and steps it down into something that your radio can actually work with. Let's talk about the antenna itself because this one is a little different. Instead of the typical 49 to 1 transformer, this NFED half wave utilizes a 64 to 1 auto transformer. This helps shift the impedance to a level or an area that's a little bit better suited for this particular design. And the wire itself is about 130 feet long, and this includes an inductance coil about 8 feet out from the transformer. That coil helps bring the higher bands, like 20 meters and 10 meters, into resonance. In fact, I made a whole video on this and you should check it out. Both the wire and the enclosure feel extremely durable. The wire is thick and it's heavy duty. Something that looks and feels like that it can survive the outdoors for a long term without too much fuss. Although you should probably check it once a month to make sure everything is okay. The enclosure is injection molded ABS, which is nicely done. Now, ABS is a tough plastic, but it's not always the most ultraviolet resistant over time. That said, this box feels solid, and it's built with rubber gaskets inside to help keep the water out, so I'd still call it weather resistant. But one thing I might recommend is to mount it with an SO239 connector facing downward or as close to downward as possible. Otherwise, this could become a point of water ingress, and especially in heavy rain or over a long-term exposure. One nice touch was this heavy-duty rope, which I wasn't expecting to receive, and that's a small thing, but a very welcome thing. Inside the enclosure is a green iron powdered toroid, which has near-infinite resistance on my multimeter, and that's consistent with iron powder material. Based on the size and the build, it seems equivalent to something like a FT240 core, although we can't be sure until we get an LCR meter. The SendFed half wave is rated at 150 watts on sideband and 100 watts on digital modes like CW or FT8. From my inspection, the assembly quality is excellent. The clean windings, the solid strain relief, and overall it's a well thought out build. To really test this antenna, I took it out to the field and I ran two different setups. My main testing was done with the feed point mounted at 35 feet, sloping down to around 20 to 25 feet. Utilizing 50 foot length of RG8X coax, I ran this with my ASU FT891, operating sideband FT8 and even a little bit of CW. I also did a test the day before with much more compromise of a setup the feed point being only about three feet off the ground and rising to about 30 feet, then terminating back down to about four feet. Surprisingly, most bands worked fine without a tuner, but 20 meters was out of tune, and that's where a key takeaway comes in. Height matters with this antenna, and unlike a 40 meter NFED halfway, which seems to be a little more forgiving, the 80 meter NFED halfway really benefits from a more ideal deployment. If you're not able to elevate the antenna properly, especially at the feed point, your results may vary for the worse. And that is something to think about if you're going to be doing portable ops, 
Because in a typical parts of the year situation, you may not that always side have the time or the space to carry two port. clampable masks. And I think they do get that them so guide up, that off deployed, it has the, the antenna ground and then tear everything down all within a very short window. And I specifically mentioned clampable masks because this wire. I well, was it's trying heavy. not to remove this zip tie. It's right well here, built. It's I'm rugged, no doubt. Oh, interesting. But it's not exactly lightweight. You need some serious support to be able to keep the Hold antenna on. elevated without a significant droop in the middle. Now we ask ourselves is this a portable antenna? Is this a home antenna? Is it both? Well, one of the selling points of this antenna, and something I've heard from others, is that the NFED half wave we're talking about today is easy to install and it's easy to carry thanks to its small and lightweight design. Uh, supposedly that makes it an ideal choice for both home setups and portable use, but I would respectfully disagree. See, we all have different thresholds for what we consider lightweight or portable, and while the antenna is absolutely well built and heavy duty, it's not what I would throw in a minimalistic go bag. If you're hiking where ounces are pounds, you've just added a lot of weight that takes up a lot of space. And that said, if you're doing something like camping on BLM land for 14 days, this antenna might actually be the perfect match. Drive out, pull your gear from your overlanding rig, set up, camp, enjoy a rugged, reliable 14 days of multi-band communications, and then pack up and head to the next location. And for home use, I really have zero reservations about setting this up, provided I had the space here at my permanent location. At around 130 feet, you'll need a decent sized lot or at least a good layout plan. There are several ways that this antenna can be configured, like a sloper, an inverted L, and a horizontal configuration. So it's up to you to do a little bit of research on what may fit in your space, and that's going to be key for properly utilizing this antenna. If you are planning on using this antenna in the field, here are a few quick tips that made a big difference for me. First, and I've said it before, get that feed point as high as possible. This doesn't just apply to this 80 meter and fit a half wave, but it really does any antenna. It did help, especially on 20 meters, and this made the antenna perform more consistently for me overall. Second, bring at least two solid support options, or if you're confident with it, have a good arborist throw line ready. I found using clampable mast helped me reduce that sag I mentioned earlier from the heavier wire while still keeping the antenna wire high and reasonably tight. Finally, Plan your layout. This antenna is long. I get it, sometimes men have a hard time estimating size. But this thing is about 130 feet long or 175 bananas. Knowing ahead of time how you're going to deploy it, whether it's in your backyard or out in the field for a field day weekend, will save you time, energy, and frustration. And as a bonus tip, today I want to talk about the counterpoise connection. This antenna doesn't really include a dedicated counterpoise lug as we would expect. However, it doesn't mean you can't add one. If you're going to be using a shorter coax, say under 25 feet, you can attach a simple counterpoise wire by utilizing a small hose clamp on the SO239. Why would you do this? Well, the coax shield often acts as a return path for the end-fed half-wave setup. Adding a counterpoise can help stabilize tuning and give any stray RF a better path to follow. It could help you ham hard. It's not always required, especially with longer coax runs, but in a portable situation, you might not have a longer run of coax. Where do we stand with this 80 meter end fed half wave from Guzizu? Is it worth it? Well, I think it comes down to how you plan to use it. For home setups such as long term field deployments or long term camping and overlanding, it's a solid choice. After all, the build quality is excellent, the wire and the enclosure are tough, and it covers a wide range of bands without a tuner in most cases. But for lightweight portable operations, especially if you're hiking or doing quick park on the air activations, 
you might want to think twice because this is a big antenna with heavy wire. And when you get a big antenna with heavy wire, it really demands proper supports, proper planning for the best results. And that said, I'm very impressed with this. With the right deployment, this antenna performs and currently it's around 79 US dollars and that might change. I think it's a very fair price for the build quality and what you're gonna get in the kit. I wanna give a big thanks to Guzizu for sending this over to test and thanks to you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please consider hitting that thumbs up and consider subscribing for more ham radio reviews. Thanks for watching, until next time, 73.